Hi, my name is Ranger Denise here at Everglades National Park. Today we're going to be joining our Everglades education team at Loop Road to learn a little bit more about adaptations and why they're important to all of us at home. some examples of an adaptation. Think of, think of how a bear hibernates in the winter to stay warm. That would be what we call a behavioral adaptation. Something it changed in its behavior to survive better. There's also a penguin. A penguin has waterproof feathers that will help it stay warm and dry in those frigid Arctic temperatures. That is what we would call a structural adaptation, something in its body that's built in that helps it survive better. Hi, I'm Ranger Yeva. We are out in the sawgrass prairie and often the sawgrass gets all the attention, but today we're gonna focus on something a little bit smaller. One of my favorite things here in the park. We are gonna learn about parafighting, or as us park rangers like to call it, Everglades gold. It may look a little ucky and yucky, but when you look a little closer and you take a smell, you can discover how awesome parafighting really is. It has some pretty cool adaptations that help it to survive here in the Everglades and benefit other plants and animals. It provides a habitat complete with food, water, shelter, and space that allows many plants and animals to survive here in the sawgrass prairie. So let's explore some of the adaptations of parafighting. One important one is that it acts like a sponge. When you give it a squeeze, you can see that the water that comes out of the parafighting is actually very clear. This is because the parafighting acts like a filter to clean the water. This is the water that you drink at home. So what kind of animals do you think live in parafighting? Do you think we'll find a shark? No, too small for our sharks. Not enough space or shelter. But we do find much tinier creatures like aquatic insects, invertebrates, and snails. The parafighting is the perfect home for them. What do these creatures eat? If you guess parafighting, then you're right. But parafighting is also a living thing that also needs to have its own food. So what does it eat? Well, parafighting has an adaptation. It photosynthesizes or gets its energy and food from the sun. So if the parafighting were to be eaten by a beetle, it would be eaten by a fish, it would be eaten by a wood stork, it was eaten by an alligator, Parafighting is the base of our Everglades food chain. It has many important adaptations for many different plants and animals to survive here in the Everglades. I guess our nickname Everglades Gold really is right after all. Thanks for joining me learning about the many adaptations of parafighting. What are three interesting facts that you learned about? Hey guys, my name is Ranger Dan with Everglades National Park. In the Everglades, we have a lot of very important residents down here. One big example are the wading birds we have. Scientists in the Everglades look to the wading birds to see the health of the park. If they see a lot of wading birds, a lot of colonies, they'll know this area is very healthy. A big example of our wading birds are the wood storks we have. Wood storks live here year round. Actually, I think you hear one of them now. Well, hey, Ranger Dan, did you bring us some visitors today? Hey, Pinky, we have some junior rangers here to learn about the Everglades. Oh, that is wonderful. We're so happy to have you. Welcome. Our first question for you is, where do you live in the Everglades? Well, I live here with my husband in the tree hammocks and in the Shark River Slough. It's where our parents showed us to live as chicks. That's awesome. Can you show us one of these tree hammocks? Absolutely. Let's go. What do you look for in tree hammocks? Well, I look that they're high and dry off the ground, away from the predators, but so we're still close enough to water. Because, well, it's just such a beautiful neighborhood and this is where we want to raise our chicks. Oh yeah, family is a very, very important thing. 
How many chicks do you have? We have three that just hatched last week. Oh wow, that's excellent. So what kinds of things are you teaching them? Well, come on, I'll show you. So what we teach our young ones is we fly on the warm air currents here. We soar above the ground like our cousins, the vultures. And then when we find some nice water that we want to find some yummy treats in, we dig with our pink, beautiful feet. And we use our powerful bill to search in the water for something yummy to eat. And then we snap it up and enjoy a nice treat. Wow, that looks like a really cool way to fish. I like to fish too. But when I fish, I like to put a pink worm on my fishing pole. That way I can track the fish that way. Well, that's funny that you mentioned that, Ranger Dan, because I have my own little pink worms. In fact, when we all dance in the slough, when we dance around and do our wood stork dance, these beautiful pink toes that we have actually help us by attracting the fish because they look like that pink worm on the end of your hook. You see, we're not so different after all. Well, we really are similar. We both like to find a good place to live, and we like to fish for our food. Piggy, where are you going for the wet season? Well, it does get a little bit hot out here in, the, in that wet season, so we actually fly down to Argentina. We migrate down there, and that's where my parents raised me. That sounds great. I might just join you. Hi, my name is Ranger Trisha, and we're going to be learning about the adaptations of cypress stones. If you look out to the horizon, you'll notice that they look like hills, except if we were to explore one, we would actually be going down in elevation. Cypress stones are a response to the depression within the bedrock of the limestone. This makes for an awesome habitat for our cypress trees. As you'll notice that the taller ones aren't necessarily due to age, but rather the amount of water and nutrients they receive. As you can see, we're currently in the dry season, but based on the watermarks of the trees, you can see how high the water gets during the wet season. If you notice the bottom of the trees, they kind of broaden out. This is a really good adaptation for stability, especially during hurricanes. So Ranger Yeva is going to demonstrate how trees react to the wind. So she's a normal tree. All right, now we're gonna widen our stance to better stabilize ourselves during wind. All right, she didn't go anywhere. So if we look back at our cypress trees and notice the wide parts of the bottom, now we can associate that with Ranger Yeva being able to secure herself and stabilize during these high winds. So that's the adaptation of these cypress trees. One of the coolest adaptations of our cypress trees is that they know when daylight savings is. Well, sort of. While our cypress trees love water, they don't always get it especially during the dry season. So one of their adaptations is that they have to lose their needles and they basically go into hibernation. So they wait until the wet season and as you can see, we already have brand new needles growing. For added stability, we have some of the root systems that are protruding out of the soil. We call these knees. Thank you for joining me on this adventure through the Cypress Dome. What were your three interesting facts that you learned? I'm Ranger Miranda, and today we're going to learn about adaptations of crocodiles and alligators. Here in South Florida, it's the only place in the world where we can find both American alligators and American crocodiles in the same place. We are in the northern part of the American crocodiles range, while in the southern part of the American alligators range. Let's take a look at some of the differences. Howdy Ranger! I'm looking for some gators and crocodiles. Gators and crocodiles, you came to the right place. Here in Everglades National Park, we have both. However, you're gonna find them in different parts of the park. Crocodiles have a special adaptation, a salt secreting gland that allows them to be able to survive and thrive on the saltwater coast. However, alligators do not have this adaptation, so they are going to hang out in the freshwater environments like the Shark River Slough, where we are now. So alligators either have to move to a freshwater environment or die. 
That's a very nice hat you have there. Thanks, that's my lucky gator catching hat. Gator catching hat? Did you know that it actually looks a little more like a crocodile? What? Crocodiles are a greenish gray color and they have teeth from both rows showing. We call it a toothy grin. While alligators are almost a black color and they have just teeth from their top row showing. Do you feel a little more like you have knowledge to get out there and look for gators and crocs? Yeah, I do. Awesome. Both crocodiles and alligators are ectothermic, meaning they get their heat from outside sources. To get that heat, they can bask in the sun, they can go to warmer or cooler water. When they bask in that sun, they have built-in mini solar panels right on their backs. These are called scoots. These bony ridges have plenty of holes in them to let the warm blood out and the cold blood in. These bony ridges help increase the surface area of the alligators and crocodiles back. This helps them soak up more sun. Thank you for joining me and learning about adaptations of crocodiles and alligators. What are three interesting facts that you learned about these adaptations of crocodiles and alligators? Thank you for joining our Everglades education team today on our marvelous adventure to learn about so many wonderful adaptations. To recap, we learned all about the pear fighting and saw it up close with Ranger Yeva. We also met Pinky the Wood Stork with Ranger Dan. We saw and experienced the Cypress Dome with Ranger Trisha. And we also learned a little bit more about how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile with Ranger Miranda. What are your three favorite things that you learned today that are adaptations in Everglades National Park?